Well, Ken, here we are on the Bywell Beat. The fantastic River Tyne is behind us. We know it's absolutely loaded with salmon, and I know both of us are very anxious to go fishing. But before we do, today we're talking about catch and release, the importance of these fabulous fish going back into this river, going upstream to spawn. And in front of us, we've got an array of bits and pieces, terminal tackle, um, particularly barbless hooks. I'm really interested because the traditions with salmon fishing, hundreds of years, people have always used barbed hooks because they take the fish. If we're putting the fish back, why is it important that we use barbless? Well, I think in reality, uh, it stems from the fact that a lot of the early season fishing for salmon was traditionally spinning. And if you were spinning then, you tended to use a spinning bait that had quite a large treble hook. Um, at the time, the majority of salmon, the vast majority of salmon were obviously killed, so it didn't really make, make a great deal of difference and it meant that you could actually land the fish readily, get it in quickly, and there was very little chance of actually losing the fish as such. But as you say, as people began to take notice of the fact that it was a fantastic contribution to make to the river in terms of actually putting fish back, and then they started to think about it again. And nowadays the convention really is to use either a double hook or indeed a single hook what you can do is you can pinch the barb of the hook to actually lower the, the um, effect, if you like, of the barb. And you have a situation now in uh, some countries like Ireland and Canada and so on, where in the context of catch and release, single barbless hook, hooks are actually demanded. You have to fish single barbless. And increasingly, um, anglers are finding that even with spinners, even with traditional spinning baits, uh, such as even the plugs, even the rapalas, uh, you can actually replace those. And people are finding that they do hook fish very effectively. And uh, certainly there is no need for people to be concerned about hooking the fish. You do need to be fairly firm when you're playing a salmon with a barbless hook. I've certainly had my problems with them when I was learning what to do. But once you get used to it, you can land them fairly readily on the barbless hooks. One of the areas of concern with an angler is the quality of the hooks that you're using, particularly when you're fishing for very big fish like salmon that fight so hard. Um, I think in the past, the quality of the, the hooks that we could replace trebles with was quite low. Now, because of lots of developments in tackle and, and the quality of the materials available, those hooks that we can buy are very, very high quality barbless singles. So they're not going to straighten when you hook a big fish. They're going to last. They're going to stay on your lure. You don't need to keep changing them. What you find in some areas, people are moving now completely to single hooks. So the actual law designates that people have to use single barbless hooks if they're going to go and fish catch and release. That's got to be better for the fish because if you've got you know, a treble like this rattling around in the bottom of a salmon, um, in its mouth, damaging its gill rakers, the chances of that fish going back safely are greatly reduced. And if you've got something like this, a single hook, which is just neatly nipped into its scissors or you know, even in the lip or the yeah. tongue, yeah. then that fish has got a very good chance of survival going back and spawning in the river. But it's so simple to actually change a hook and uh, if you have a little tool like this, which basically just has a little uh, split ring tool at the top, basically a little beak, you just can insert the little beak into the split ring and it literally uh, takes no time at all to be able to, uh, to, be able to take the, uh, the treble hook can be removed in a few seconds. You can do that easily on the bank of the river. And then you just go along and just replace it then equally easily with your, with your barbless single. So job is done. So that's lures, but what about flies, Ken? Because we're looking around us here, I mean, these are some of the spectacular salmon flies that we, we fish with in Ireland. Um, there are flies here that we fish with on the tine. There's a single. They're lovely looking things, aren't they? Oh, they really are. Very pretty. Well, wh what you find is, and that one is actually a very good example, increasingly people are commercially tying flies with much smaller barbs. So it's actually, that's uh, almost a semi-barbed. It's almost becoming a moot point as to whether it's barbed or not because it's so gently barbed. But I would still pinch that down just for, just, just for completeness as such. Some of the others then have slightly larger barbs and they certainly can be pinched down very quickly. And look at this fabulous thing here. This is a Caledonia fly. This is a, an off-the-shelf product. You can go into a shop and buy this you know, and you will catch fish in the time using it. This has got a barbed hook on it. But just let me show you how easy it is to nip this barb down. You know, we've got a set of strong-ish pliers. These aren't very expensive. And all you need to do is just get the pincers of the pliers over the top of the barb, give it a little bit of a squeeze, and you'll feel a little bit of give. It sometimes cracks off. And there you've got a barbless salmon fly. The other thing I want to talk about before we go to the river is leaders. Um, 
we're talking about trying to catch a very powerful fish, a very strong fish in fairly strong flow. So the least amount of time you spend playing a fish like that, the better for it. It's a good idea to try and get these fish in nice and quickly so they're strong, they're healthy, they go back strongly. So we're looking at, you know, even old fashioned lines like this spool of Maxima, and I bet lots of you have got Maxima in your tackle bags. You know, it's a great line, it's very old fashioned, old technology, but the reason this is so good is look at this, how stretchy this is. This is 15 pound Maxima, and I'm pulling about an 18 inch length off. Well, you can see there's a couple of inches of stretch on that. So if you've got a big fish that's tearing off down the river time, you've got a chance that that fish, there's a bit of give there to give you a better chance of landing it. But I'm interested in this stuff that you've brought, Ken. Well, this, this is actually 40 pound breaking strain. It really is 40 pound breaking strain. And if you look at the, the diameter of it, you know, yeah, it's let's just approximately the, the same. If, if anything, it's a little bit thinner, but it's extraordinarily strong. So in reality, uh, particularly here in the Tyne, from what we've seen of it, the water is generally quite coloured. It's very brown. Fish really isn't going to notice the nylon if it's a moving fly. So you can afford to go fairly heavy, whether it's 15, 20 pound, or indeed some of the modern lines. And it means then that you can, with impunity, put pressure on the fish and get the fish in fairly quickly. And the uh, fresher the fish in the net, the better it's going to go back. That's the general rule. It's certainly worth doing that, getting the fish in quickly. So we've seen the terminal tackle, Ken. Uh, now we've got the rod ready to go. Just talk me through your setup and um, how you make sure that uh, your tackle is ready to deal with these extraordinary fish. Well, I think the important thing, first of all, is to have a rod that's worthy of those fish in the sense that you're not going to put too much pressure on them in terms of uh, waiting forever to try and land them. So this is quite a strong rod. It's a Mackenzie rod. It's one of the new graphenes. It's 14 foot for a nine. So it's a nine weight rod. We have a 15 pound uh, nylon and quite a short leader, about maybe five, five, six feet of an actual leader. And then the actual poly leader above that is quite fast sinking. So the river I'm told I haven't fished here before is relatively shallow. So I need to just watch that, but still I need to get the, try and get the tackle down if I can. So the whole point of having a strong setup like this is to reduce the amount of time that you're playing the fish because the longer the fish is being played, the more energy it expends and then the, the less likely it is to go back safely. Exactly, yeah. And a good rule of thumb is a pound a minute. So um, if you have a 10 pound fish or 12 pound fish, 10 or 12 minutes is really the max that really you should be playing it. It depends on the individual fish. Some fish fight really, really hard, but in general, you can get them in a little bit before that. It feels an eternity when you're at the other end of the rod, but generally, you know, with a teen's fish, fish maybe 10 to 12 pound, uh, seven, eight minutes, you'll have the fish in generally. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to bring the fish in when it's still very active and you're trying to get it into the net and you're trying absolutely not, not to have to beach it. So you want to try and get it into the net when you're about two, two or three foot of water. And the net itself is actually the recovery zone for the fish. And people tend to forget that. They go mad trying to get the fish out of the net. Once you get the fish in the net, you don't have to worry that much. You know, if, if the fish is facing in the right direction and you don't have an issue, you can take your time and give the fish a chance. And really taking the fly out just before the fish is ready to go is a great idea because then the fish can actually take off or you can support it depending on what way you want to actually uh, treat it when you see the condition it's in when it comes into the net. If you talk about the net, we've got one here. Um, one of the things that's moving on very quickly is technology with the development of nets used for this type of fishing. This is one of the brand new style rubber mesh, no knots in it at all, lovely soft fish friendly mesh so that any fish that comes into contact with this net is not going to be damaged in any way at all and that is so so important. Certainly the one thing that's very good to remember is that the slime on the fish treat it as the fish's overcoat. So you really don't want to put any, any gaps in that overcoat because in terms of uh, fungal spores and so on that are coming down the river constantly, if you give them any opportunity at all, and you can see that at spawning when they're doing a lot of rubbing off rocks and fighting with one another and so on, they get quite a lot of fungus. So that's really important. So these softer nets are perfect. Now, as you say, there's quite a number of designs. This is a lovely one. Uh, this is a very, very soft rubber net. But then um, poly net is useful. Poly nets a bit of, can be troublesome because you can actually catch your flies in the poly net. So for me, I normally use a knotless net when I'm at home. But any of those choices are great because it basically means you're trying to make sure you don't take the slime off the fish. So here are a few key points to remember when choosing tackle. All things you need to do before you get to the river. The rod needs to be up to the job. If you're not sure, seek advice from an expert, and your reel needs a reliable drag to control those surging runs. 
use strong main line, 15 pounds minimum. Modern lines have incredible diameters, so shop around for something really strong, but really thin. Consider using small barbless hooks on all your flies and lures, nothing bigger than a size six. Trebles are unnecessary, so barbless singles or doubles are the way to go. If you have got barbed hooks, pinch the barb right down using pliers. If you keep a tight line to the fish, you won't lose any. And choose your landing net with fish care in mind. Knotless small mesh or modern rubber net type heads don't damage your catch. Your net should be large enough for the fish to lie flat in the bottom. Some traditional large style mesh nets can damage fins and split tails. And always carry a pair of good quality long-nosed forceps to remove those hooks.